What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. So we have another edition of Upgrade and I have my homie, Casey Lau in Vancouver. And uh, so this video is gonna be about things you can do while you're stuck at home. Um, but before we start, I just wanna remind you, I hope you'll like and subscribe because there'll be more great videos coming your way. All right, let's go. All right, Casey, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going, Derek? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> We got an interesting setup here. Um, so how is it over in Vancouver? Well, it's, uh, it's probably the same as it is everywhere else in the world. It's uh, everybody's at home. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, apocalypse time over here uh, in uh, Canada. I feel like Canada has done a good job, though, of, uh, you know, forcing people to uh, stay home and making sure that the borders are closed and airlines are shutting down and everything like that so it's pretty it's pretty empty out on the streets and pretty empty around town they've just invoked a new like fifty thousand dollar fine for restaurants that are still open for people to go inside of and uh there's a thousand dollar uh, personal individual fine if you're caught like hanging out partying on outside at the beaches and at the parks now so hopefully these are uh ways to get people to stay inside Oh yeah, those are, <laughs> I would definitely stay at home. Um, I don't think they have that, while, I, while I'm here in LA, I don't think they have that any kind of penalty and that is the challenge. But hey, well, if you're staying at home um, and there is a risk, of course, of suffering from severe financial penalty, uh, what are the things that we can do while we're at home? I'm glad you asked, Derek. Let me take this off first. <laughs> this is a bit too much hard to talk, hard to talk through and there's nobody else here. I just. So used to wearing a mask all the time, but... Um, Have you been really wearing a mask all the time? Uh, not inside, I've just put it on just to <laughs> make you laugh. But uh, so um, I was lucky, I bought a lot of cool things during Christmas or received things at Christmas to uh, make that, you know, that are tech gadgets and I thought they were kind of neat. And so I wanted to uh, show to people because I, I'm very impressed by them all. So let's start with the first one. I picked this up when I was in Tokyo in, uh, at Christmas. It's the, um, okay. it's nothing new. It's uh, the D Nintendo Switch. It's been out for a couple years already, but I always thought, why, would, why do I need this? It's kind of uh, dumb mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. kind of childish, rather not dumb, just kind of childish because it's like Nintendo, it's Pokemon and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a huge gamer, so not really uh, playing these things. Uh, but when I was in Tokyo, like everybody had one. Um, it was on, um, it's tax free as well. So the price comes down considerably um, when you buy it in Japan. And so I got one and now I can't put it down. It is definitely very entertaining and like anything else, like an iPhone or like a, any kind of uh, PlayStation or like that, depends on the games, right? See what you're into. And uh, I've been playing this game that I enjoy quite a bit. It's called Diablo. What's that? It's, it's an old game, oh. but it's, uh, oh. I've never played it before. It's the third one. I think the fourth one's coming out soon. Um, and playing it on the Nintendo Switch seems crazy because this is like a, you know, like a Nintendo, Nintendo console where you think of Mario and things like that. But... Diablo is definitely a very a violent game and it's super fun to play that. I love, I love the original Diablos. I played one and two. Um, and uh, the big thing was when we were playing it was that the internet <laughs> was spotty because it was yes. dial up. Yeah. So um, there was, is there a mode on there where if your character dies, that's it? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, luckily I haven't experienced that because I've been dying a lot. So <laughs> no, I always respawn or whatever and, and keep going that's the kind of fun about the game is that it's not like super hard where you die and then you gotta start all over again right you just kind of uh, try, try to keep going and then you can increase and get weapons and things like that to make yourself stronger mm -hmm. so you can fight people more i find it very interesting i just i got it because i love the design of the the characters and stuff like that and i thought it was and just like game of thrones where i kind of like man i don't yeah. really like this kind of fantasy stuff right but man it's really really good so very impressed by that I also oh, am a I huge, love those. actually I bought this because um, uh, actually I'm a huge Rick and Morty fan and uh, Justin Roiland, which is the co-creator of Rick and Morty, he made a game called Trover Saves the Universe and basically it's about a purple guy that goes around trying to, it's a, just a bizarre game, I don't even know how to explain it, but he does the voices for all the characters, so it's like Morty is the main guy, there's a lot of swearing and a lot of hilarious, like it sounds like they ad-libbed the whole game um dialogue so that if you're not like a casual gamer that game is the uh i would say is the entry point for you to get involved in playing those kind of games 
Oh, I love Rick and Morty. That show is hilarious. The writing is amazing. It's just got so many inside jokes and references to the 80s and 90s. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I'll definitely check out that game. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, the Switch, I think it was really good. The next thing I well, got... So going back to this, going down back to the Switch too, like, yep. um, just, just, I just want to quickly ask, like, how much did you pay uh, in Japan for it versus here in the U.S.? How big a difference is it? Is, is uh, it? I think it's mostly the tax difference. I think they're the same price. Yeah. It's around 300 bucks. Now, there's two kinds, right? There's this one, which um, I got because it plugs into your TV. There's a dock, and you'll see the video that will play, and mm. it'll show you some of the you know, background of the Switch. But yeah, there's a dock that it goes into, and then there's the Nintendo uh, Switch Lite, which doesn't dock. And it, you know, basically, the one th cool thing about this is that these things come off. And you can use mm -hmm. them like a, like a Wii or plug them into like a controller so you can just play this from this TV from far away or plug it into mm -hmm. a real TV. So I found that that is super flexible for a game platform. Um, so this one's more expensive. The light is, more, is cheaper, but that's mostly just for handheld uh, playing. So it's kind of fun too, but yeah. Um, so you'd want the one that switches out to your television because that would just make a lot of for sense. Our, for us older people, I would say yes because, you know, our eyesight isn't so good. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that good <laughs> if you're looking at this little screen all day long, right? So I think the bigger screen, um, because, you know, the graphics aren't like a PlayStation or Xbox quality, right? Because it's, it is like more Nintendo-ish and it's lower, lower res. So, but it's just uh, easier to see people w moving around and things attacking you on a bigger screen. So definitely, I thought that was a good idea. And that's what I. That's why I went for this one. Do you play it on this on the television more often then? Or nowadays, yeah. If I'm at home, I'm playing it all the time <laughs> in the thing. But then you know, you're taking it like you're lying down on the sofa or whatever, and you didn't plug it in. You can just pick it up and start playing it. But I assume it's that's like for on the go, right? You're on the if you're taking the MTR or the bus or whatever, you're uh, you're playing the game the whole time, right? And then you come home, you can plug it in. So I guess it depends on what kind of uh, setup you have. But I thought it was uh, good that sometimes I can play it on the little screen, and sometimes I can play it on the big screen. Well, I mean, like, let's say you're in the kitchen. Can you, pl can you watch stuff, too? Can you, like, uh, use it as a, another screen? Uh, no. I don't think so. Can you do that? I don't know. Maybe. No, you cannot. It only plays the games. It doesn't play, it doesn't play Netflix or anything like that. Um, and uh, that's good, because I, I don't want it to do I don't want it to play Netflix. I have enough Netflix uh, machines now. Um, but the right. cool thing was that, A, you can just download the games. You don't need to buy physical cartridge like you used to. Um, and then, you know, depending yeah. on the capacity inside the game. So I downloaded Trover uh, off from the e-store, but then I bought Diablo as this cartridge, right? So, but you don't have mm -hmm. to. You can just buy it on thing. But I guess having this is good because then you can resell it later because it's an actual physical uh, disc that people can put into their machines. Um, was there but, a price difference? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's the same price. There might be like more specials. I've noticed that there are like discounts on the e-store um, very yeah. frequently. So you can buy games for cheap. So I bought this game called Cuphead. It was only 20 uh -huh. bucks, but I'm sure it was uh, 40 bucks like before I bought it on sale. So there's uh, things you can troll around in there looking for stuff. And uh, yeah, I think it's good. It's good fun. It's a good time. It's a good. Uh, I don't know how much I'd play it when I'm not stuck at home all the time. Right. Because I'm not, uh, <laughs> you know, Hopefully, let's see. I don't know. Maybe this is a whole new distraction uh, addiction I built because of uh, staying inside all day. But um, I hope. Uh, usually, I'm not. I don't have this much free time to sit around playing games all the time. So this is a. This is just a in um, uh, coronavirus uh, kind of thing started up. <laughs> well, are you interacting with other people on it? Can you play other yep. people? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the other. I think that's the that's the big thing is that yeah, you can team up with your friends for Diablo or team up with your friends for uh, Cuphead or some of these other games. Uh, mm -hmm. Not all of them have multiplayer, but most of them do. Um, so it's good, yeah, so that's why it's good fun. Um, it's not really set up like a PlayStation, right? That's the thing, PlayStation has the, you can put the headset in and talk to people right away. This thing, you need, a, mm -hmm. you need an app on a phone to talk to other people. It's really, it's very weird. So I'm, I mean, it's more like you're gonna be hanging around with other people. It's not very intuitive to, uh, as it is with other, like PC and, and um, bigger uh, console console games so it depends well, i guess it depends on what, sounds, you're, what you're playing yeah it sounds like a mobility thing though because i know you're like the biggest digital nomad out there like the guy who's like really mary kondo his life and then is in different cities all the time that's part of your lifestyle so maybe this is something that makes sense for a person who's 
um, mobile or, but now I guess now that is shifting. So you know, that's, that? a good, that's a good point. I don't think that's true though. If I'm mobile and I'm not confined to my house, I'm not staying in my place though. I'm going out, right? I'm going out exploring the city and things like that I'm staying in. So I would think that uh, outside of this situation that we're in right now, most likely I won't play that after we get out of this. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, right. Wow. I, I don't think, uh, it's not something I'm going to go to another city and then sit down in a, in, a, in a hotel room or an Airbnb and play this game by myself when I'm in like London or <laughs> New York or something or LA, right? I'm going to be out there doing other stuff. If this is more of a of a confine um, product for me personally, right? If you're a little kid, right? Your parents yeah. won't let you go out. So you gotta stay home and that's what you'll do, play video games, right? But when you're an adult, you don't have to stay home, right? So I wouldn't stay home playing video games if I could go out it's just for right now that um, I didn't uh, bring my PlayStation with me on my uh, world tour. So that's why I have this little device and I thought it's great portable um, game system. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I was thinking, cause like Xbox, I mean, there's no uh, you could bring that along with you. The you know the old PlayStation Three. I was thinking about like that's not something that you would bring with you on your travels. Unless you were a hardcore only... gamer, yes, exactly. And that takes up a lot <laughs> yeah, of space in your bag. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't carry that around. The um, the next thing I want to talk about is this thing I also got for Christmas. It is the um, Oculus Quest. So uh, you probably know the story. Facebook bought this company. This is mm -hmm. a VR helmet. Um, and the great thing about it, it's a brand new one. And what the great thing about this is that it requires no PC because most of them require some sort of uh, computer uh, tethering. So there's usually like a cable from this into a computer to feed into graphics. Mm -hmm. This one, while the, the resolution isn't super, super high, it's still pretty good for what it is. You put this on your helmet, on your head, and then you have these controllers here um, to mm -hmm. uh, move around this virtual world. So this thing, um, I don't know when the last time you tried VR, but for me it was maybe two or three years ago. It was pretty cool, but there was a whole huge setup for it. You got to put cameras in your room. You got this computer. Mm -hmm. You got a cable. It seemed like a hassle for what it was. What it was worth. Oh right? yeah, we went on a cruise and then we tried all these VR things. One of them you had to wear like a backpack and it got really hot and like yeah, you know, it's just so yeah. But this one, I've tried this one. I've tried this one before too. A friend of mine is doing like kind of art installations. Um, which is pretty cool and but uh, actually so Can you clarify to me because I did some research on the internet like what is uh, What is the quest? Is this the higher-end one? There's That's like a hundred fifty dollar two dollars two hundred dollar question uh, two hundred dollar uh, version and There are I believe there are three versions. There's the oculus go which is like 200 bucks This is the middle one. It's called the quest. This one's 500 bucks and then there's okay. the rift which is I think a thousand dollars plus you need a PC. So this uh, one is the okay. cheapest, highest quality one you can get right now um, outside of the Go. I haven't tried the Go, so I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, this one is. Uh, I'd say this one is perfect for 2020, where we are right now, and it'll just, it'll just get better as we go as we go ahead into the future. I mean, think about it. this whole thing. All the computer components are in this piece right here. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's that's. Uh... That's not how, wait, so what is the, um, the, you know, the part right here, is that foam or is it like a soft, uh, this part here, the part that touches your face? Yeah. There's a foam. There's definitely a foam thing here. Uh huh. So yeah, it's kind of gross if you're sweating in it and give it to somebody else to wear, but definitely yeah, it's really a, your own personal thing. Yeah. I would say it's your own personal thing. I'm not sure people are, are borrowing it to other people, but the idea is that you could potentially go, go out and meet people wearing this and like I could talk mm -hmm. to you when you had one of these on um, and we could see each other's cartoons. I don't know, walking around. I don't know, we have <laughs> video conferencing, so I don't know why we would need that, but maybe some people want to walk around as a, as a cartoon and talk to other cartoon people. Um, but for gaming, this thing is incredible. So I'm playing a game called Pistol Whip right now and uh, it is, uh, it's like an exercise thing. You basically uh, have two, you have guns that are these things. And then mm -hmm. you basically mm -hmm. shift through this um, virtual world and all these, you know, killer guys show up and you just have to shoot them. But you have to shoot them on, to the beat of the music. So there's like oh. a disco, you know, techno vibe going doom, doom, doom. And then you have to shoot these guys that keep popping out of everywhere in this VR space. It is super fun. And um, it gets, more, you know, obviously it gets more difficult, right? So you have to move around. Plus there's like things that come at you. So you have to like shift from side to side. You have to bend down mm -hmm. because the bullets are coming at you like in like a matrix style. They're coming slow motion yeah. 
in a, in a line directly to you. So you have to move. So you, you can't let it hit you. So it's quite a workout, I think, um, and it's super fun. So that game is really exciting. Um, and then uh, that's like, you have to pay for the game. So like games are like 20 bucks and definitely 100% worth it. Um, and also there's a game I'm playing called Vader Immortal, which is a Darth Vader game, Star Wars game. And it is insane if you're a Star Wars fan because you're standing oh, yeah. there with this helmet on and, uh, you know, everywhere you look, you're in some Star Wars uh, location and then Darth Vader comes in. They even have you trapped and hooked up to the um, interrogation uh, bed like they did in uh, Princess Leia in the first one with that little droid oh. with all the knives on it. And it comes towards That's... you and I'm like, what is going on? So, yeah, very exciting. Does that ever, like, was it like your heart, you feel your heart beat and, you know, like intense adrenaline? Yeah, I, I, it like... yeah it's, it's, I mean, okay, so... So the main thing is if you put it on first and you get used to it, it, they call it the screen door effect. So it looks like you're looking through a screen door. So it's a little bit blurry or that's something in the way, right? So you can tell mm -hmm. it's not exactly right there. But mm -hmm. the way the voice acting works and the music, and then you see Darth Vader walking around you, like he is like six, six and a half, seven feet tall, right? It's very imposing. Yeah. He's got that yeah. sound and everything. And the CG is great. It looks like there's a guy there, right? So... Yeah, I think it's for, even if you're a kid, I think it's fantastic. But for an adult, as a Star Wars fan, it's crazy to, to see this game. And of course, you get the lightsaber and you get to fight stuff with the lightsaber. Um, all, all good. And it has that kind of motion sensor or more motion feedback on this. So when you hit something, you hear the yeah. sound. Wow, wow, wow. And then you, and the thing vibrates when you hit something or gets stuck on something. So it's, it adds a little bit more realism to this thing. I, I think for 500 bucks, this thing is incredible for what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's... Oops. Half the price of my iPhone, jeez. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's yeah. Five hundred dollars sounds really reasonable. Um, and I will, well, what do you think? I mean, I know you went to this the the Galaxy theme park. I mean, this yeah. kind of virtual world building, like, is that? I mean, super exciting and. The Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland uh, was, uh, to me personally, was a huge letdown. I was extremely disappointed with what that was for the price for the price you have to pay to get into it. So, um, yeah, um, I'm just like, and then the Vader Immortal, I thought was a much better investment to, uh, to if you really wanted to interact in the Star Wars world. Um, I mean, if you're a little kid, sure, I guess, I guess the Galaxy's Edge is great because you get a like, you know, immersive in that whole world. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, taking the Millennium Falcon ride is like interesting, but you know, it's not the same. It doesn't feel very real anymore when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. If you're in a head, mm -hmm. in an Oculus headset where it's a at least 180 degrees, um, you know, in your face, and the sound is so vibrant, it feels like you're more in the Star Wars world than um, than you are if you're physically in a Disneyland space with like little kids and people yelling at each other. It doesn't sound <laughs> it doesn't sound, feel real because of who's around yeah. you, right? It feels more real when you're in this thing by yourself and. Uh, you're just immersed in the reality of this um, VR simulation. And so I am very bullish on the VR world. And I think that, um, you know, it got a bad rep a few years ago when everybody started investing in it and it didn't really pan out. I think the next five, 10 years, it's going to be everywhere, especially now when people are like going crazy for it, um, especially the Quest, because the price point is great. Mm -hmm. And of course, now that everyone's stuck inside, it's a great escape um, for the rest of the world, as long as it's a uh, you know, as long as the graphics are going to get better every year, like the iPhone, right? It just gets better and better. It's going to hit that mass mm -hmm. level where the price will come down. It'll be super clear. People will find business uses for it. And uh, it'll just be incredible. So would you... So between the Go and the Quest, you would still choose the Quest or... I would. I would. I haven't... Well, to be honest, I haven't played the Go. But I can't, I can't imagine that... If it's less quality than this, that it's going to be any, it's going to be worth it. I guess it's for people who want some kind of VR experience, but doesn't want to shell out the five hundred bucks for it. Because um, I'm sure the Rift is like, the same I'm sure the, yeah. I've heard the Rift is amazing. So if yeah. I wanted to get a P, if I was like, you know, I'm a PC guy, I'm definitely going to get the Rift as well. Because if it's if it's even clearer than this, like you know, really like 1080p HD 4K, then I'm like, I'm in. Because um, I can mm. imagine that there's going to be a huge jump between this Quest and the Rift. So I'm sure there's a huge jump between the Go and the, and the Quest. So it depends on, it's just like an iPhone, right? Which one are you going to get? Whichever one you can afford, get in it. As long as you're in it, then you can learn from it. And then you'll build up to the next one. Mm. Wow. 
Yeah, I, I found the, the VR very amazing. I think my only question for you on the last question on this is, uh, how long can you play it for before you get tired? Because like, I got the marks on my face. Yes. <laughs> Do you still get those? Or? Yep. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. It's like, uh, how much can you play before you get tired or before the battery dies? Because this thing does really suck in <laughs> a lot of uh, battery as well. So I don't know. I, I can't, I actually have never timed myself, but I'm assuming maybe less, an hour is maximum you can take it before you start to, uh, you start to lose it. And I think a lot of the games are produced to be like that, that they're only short run games, like the um, Pistol Whip game. Interesting. Each level is maybe, I don't know, five minutes long, right? So you can play it like 10 okay. times. And by then you'll probably get bored of it anyways and they want to take it off or take a break. And plus, yeah, the battery and also not, not only the impression of the mask, but also I think your mind will start to, uh, you start to lose <laughs> grip of reality if you're yeah. looking in this thing for more than an hour because it's so immersive, right? It's so crazy yeah, how much it, it pulls so you in. Yeah, it feels so real that I'm like... Yeah, if it were, if there, if there wasn't that limitation, I could see myself just, you know, wanting to, you know, so addicted to it. Because, but because of that limitation, you're just like, okay, well, my face is on fire right now. I need to put this down. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, it'll get better and better in the future, right? It'll be like Ready Player One, that movie where you just put it on. I mean, if you go go mm -hmm. back and watch that movie, how long do you actually see that guy in the real world compared to like he's inside the the game, right? He's like mostly oh, yeah. in the game. So he has no problems. I know it's a movie, but eventually it's going to be like that. Like everyone's going to have one. Even if they're living in the ghetto, they're going to apparently wear this thing like in that movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's how your apartment or place that you're <laughs> is going to turn into because yeah. you're just not tending to it. You're just playing the game. Um, all right. Well, what's, what's the, what's that last thing that you had? that uh, you wanted to talk about? Oh yeah, so this one last thing is very timely right now, right? Okay, there's a lot of problems going on in the world now and business-wise because of the uh, coronavirus and all the shutdowns around the world. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have to pick, I guess, which ones you wanna support. It, restaurants are getting hit hard, cafes are getting hot, hard, bars are getting, everything's getting hit hard right now that the economy is gonna tank and things like that. And so since I'm more of a nerd and more geeky, um, the news just came out uh, yesterday uh, or a couple days ago that um, a Diamond Comics distributor, which is the comic book distributor uh, mm -hmm. that basically uh, Marvel and DC send their comics to the distributor and this distributor distributes the comics to all the comic shops in the world. They've decided to take no new products starting on April 1st, which is basically next week. So this week is the last week that you will get comic book, new comic books for the foreseeable future, right? So, because we don't know when this is gonna end. And so that means Marvel right. and DC and everybody else who makes comics are basically just gonna be not sending product in, which I'm probably sure they're already not because uh, I'm sure the printing plants are not even open either, right? So the, how they print comic books. So there's no way to get new comics made. Physical so that means copies. it's a backlog of artists, writers, everybody in that supply chain for making a comic yeah. is just basically either continuing to make it, to backlog it, or I don't know what's gonna happen, right? So basically, um, last week I went into the comic book store and I bought this X-Men book, the physical copy. Usually I read digital comics anyway, mm -hmm. so it's not really mm -hmm. affecting me as much, but um, yeah. you're gonna see a lot of comic books shut down now because uh, they, they, they don't even have product to sell. So I guess what I wanted to just say was, if you see a comic book store or know a local comic book store, we're gonna play this video for you right now that shows what it looks like inside a comic book store. There's a website that allows you to find your local comic store. So you can find one locally, like especially if you have kids and you need to give them something to read, which is not an iPad screen or a video game. You know, you could just yeah. like order a comic and they do these curbside pickups now and things like that. So you don't have to go in the store, but you can say, hey, I want a new copy of, you know, I want a book of X-Men or a book of Spider-Man or, Spider or Superman or whatever. And just help them out because that's all they have now. The left to sell is the uh, books they have inside the store for the foreseeable future, right? Wait, hold on for a second. You can get curbside comic books? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Doing? So what happens in the comic book no uh, world, every Wednesday, new comics come out. So if you uh, subscribe to them in the comic book store, basically every Wednesday, they will have new, new issues. So Marvel, DC, Image, like all the comic companies, they will release their books every single Wednesday. So every single week, there's new comics to buy. And uh, in the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks, right, it's hard to get inside. So basically, you can just go to the comic shop on Wednesday. It's just like picking up your groceries. You go there 
um, and you maybe pay online and then you just pick up the books. Um, the guy drops it off for you on the, on the, outside the front door of the comic book store because mostly they're in like these uh, standalone uh, plazas and things like that. So it's easy to just you know, oh. run in and get them. Oh, okay. Wow. That's interesting. That's the evolution. It's almost, I mean, I'm thinking, I, you know, the whole theater, um, movie theaters too, are just having, the, are going to have the worst time. So is this, is this the end of both? Exactly. A lot of things. But the thing is with movies, right, they still have dis digital distribution. So people can go out and watch, a, um, you can go to iTunes and pay 20 bucks to watch a movie so they can still recoup some, some money. But comic books, if, you, if they're not even making them, <laughs> they're not even printing them. So it's going to be hard to get them unless you get digital versions. But then a lot of people are now saying that they'd rather just not release them because, you know, the comic book stores is the lifeblood for a lot of people. So, and the creators mm. who are making them are, you know, they're looking at it going, we're not going to release them until uh, the shops open again. Um, and then, uh, oh, so there's going to be a backlog. So we don't know how long that's going to be, right? Could be three months, could be six months, could be longer of these comics. So I'm not sure how that's going to work either. That's interesting. So, so what you're saying is like, because, of, because the digital is just so easily pirated, the comic book producers are just not releasing them digitally? Uh, that, no, no, no. I think, I, think I will think that Marvel and DC will probably continue to release them digitally because they can still get money from that. But I, mm -hmm. maybe some of the more independent comic creators um, yeah. that uh, you know, want to release the, the book as a physical book will not yeah. release it digitally first because uh, they'll just wait and then release them after everybody goes, everything goes back to normal. But yeah, we don't know when that, that is, that right? Is a, I hear you. Because, well, that's the challenge of the independent is that, like, these major corporations have other ancillary ways to yeah. earn money. But these independent guys, it's much harder. The question, like, right now is, like, Black Widow, the next MCU film coming out, which oh, is due yeah. out in May. What, what are they going to do with that? Right now, they've decided to delay it a year, mm. which they can sit on mm. for a year. But, you know, Marvel Universe movies are all connected. So mm -hmm. if they delay mm -hmm. Black Widow, that means Eternals, that means everything gets delayed. Can, can Disney do that? Can they delay everything like that and not make any money off of it? Whereas they could release Black Widow digitally and keep the, mm -hmm. keep the train moving, right? Keep all the stuff going. Yeah. And also, you know, but we know that they're not going to make as much money by releasing it digitally first than they would at a cinema. So this is the big problem. Like, you know, and also their stock is tanking like crazy as well, right? So... Well, I don't know the business ramifications everyone's of all this stuff happening. Tanking. What's that? Yeah. Is it everyone's stock is tanking? Yeah. And it's really terrible out there. Um, yeah, that is a good question. Well, were you excited about seeing Black Widow? Yeah, or definitely. Your... I'm, yeah, I'm a Marvel fan, so I'll watch any of those movies. No matter how bad they are, I'll be there to watch them. <laughs> um, I sub but, you know, it's, um, it not only affects the, the film but also the Disney Plus shows, right? They're, they've mm -hmm. got the Falcon and Winter Soldier coming up in the fall, which apparently now they've put on uh, production uh, hiatus because of the coronavirus. So now they don't even have that show. So the whole Disney Plus platform is in big trouble, right? Because they don't have enough content oh, yeah. for it. Like Netflix has all this stuff in the pipeline for years already, right? They had just interviewed the content creator, uh, executive officer of Netflix, he's got a lot of content, so that they're fine. But Disney Plus, it's like, they started releasing um, some of the movies already. They've got, I think, uh, Onward is already on uh, Disney Plus, which is that new uh, CGI movie, cartoon movie. And I think uh, Rise of Skywalker is out, or it's, it's yeah. out somewhere. So you can, they've already up, um, moved up all their releases to, to give people something to do now in this in this time but uh what happens in the next few months is it's going to be massive like uh i don't know what the, what they're planning i mean i would like to know what are they thinking inside are they just like us everybody's just like guessing what the president is saying um what all the different countries are doing right because it's not just about even about america right europe ma makes up some of the sales the olympics are just postponed so that means a lot of things are going to postpone because if they postpone that they'll postpone anything else right because anything can be mm -hmm. delayed now so um, and, the, and again, you know, I say this, I feel like it sounds pretty bad because who cares about a movie, right? There's a lot of people losing their jobs in tech, in restaurants. Um, I think they said it yesterday, Australia, one in five or one in 10 people lost their jobs already in Australia. 
So that's massive. So who cares about movies and video games and stuff like that? I mean, it's like serious, serious problem right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, and those and a lot of people who were in production are have lost their jobs as well. So I mean, it's it's a big industry for, um, for everybody. Yeah. Actually, so um, it's just going to have a big ripple effect, which is. Which is interesting. I have been trying to figure out, okay, well, what's the future after all of this kind of eventually, hopefully, you know, peaks or settles or whatever they want to call it. Yeah. But what is that future? Um, hard to say. What do you think that is? When do, do think I think it, it is? is? In, let's say the fall oh. of, of this year. Like, what are, are people going to come back and go to the theater and go back to uh, video comic shops or just going to be like, okay, well... I've lived without of it, without it, and now I don't care. Or that don't is it, that is the number one question, Derek. Exactly, that is well put. Once you get like comic books, I feel like for for me for comic books, I feel like if people are people are habitually buying them, they don't actually even like them. They're like, I've collected every single Fantastic Four since the first one, so I just keep going and buying it. But one day when it's not there, eh, I don't really care anymore. I right? just I don't I haven't read the last bunch of them. I just keep collecting them. So yeah, I think that's the thing. And what I'm saying about like Nintendo, like the Switch, right? You start, you start weaning onto these devices. Once, once it goes back to normal, people may not go back outside again for a while. They're going to take some time to, oh, I can go back out again. I can go to the cinema again. Okay, well, you know, I've been watching movies on TV all this time. It's just as good. I don't feel like the experience is as good when I go back to the main cinema. Yeah, so I think that's a huge, a huge, huge thing. I think people will want to see each other again. So I feel like um, the biggest thing <laughs> yeah. will be like conferences and amusement parks and bars and things like that. People will be definitely willing to get back together again. But yeah, movies and comic book stores and all these things that are already on the edges of, dis of disappearing. I think, yeah, that might, this might be the, you know, the final curtain call. We have to look back at SARS. What, what happened in Hong Kong in SARS time that didn't come back after SARS? You could kind of, kind of guess and take a look at those things. Because I feel like we have a unique perspective on this because we lived through this once already. Um, and that was before a lot of the digital, digital stuff was um, available and uh, how mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff can disappear now. Yeah, I mean, the people of Hong Kong, I think, were just really quickly to, quick to react. And there were, you know, there's no sort of cultural, sti cultural stigma that a wearing a mask is, is uh, not cool or yeah. something or and going out like people know to, that it's better to stay in. Um, so... Hong Kong was great in reacting, and that's why there's so few cases now um, there still. Yeah. But uh, maybe this is a good way for people to, you know, kind of wake up a little bit and be more prepared next time. I think the challenge so far for me is that the level of preparedness has not been adequate. Like, it should have been like, okay, we're shutting down. But... You know, we've already got all these hospital beds ready. We've already stocked up on these things in the last month or two. You know, we're set. Don't worry, everybody. But it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, hey, we need to shut everything down and we have to, we have, we're not ready. Yeah. So, but this is what we're doing now, at least. So. Agreed. It's, uh, it's tough times. It's tough times. But in the meantime, it's a good time to hang out with friends and reconnect. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, every, I mean, re reconnecting, um, every, and then you're just talking about this, right? That, so I don't know. Every time I have a go, <laughs> I talk to somebody, they're all, everyone's like, is everybody okay? What are you doing? Everybody's watching TV, reading books, things like that. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. culture that's being exchanged. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, nobody really knows what's going on. And then maybe you have one friend who's like a fear monger and, <laughs> and just telling you about all the bad stuff that's about to happen. And you're like, oh my God, what's going to go on? Um, yeah, I feel like um, it's just tough. I don't know. I don't. I have no answers. I've just. That's why I just talked about three completely uh, non-coronavirus things. I just wanted to uh, right. say like this is how you can maybe entertain your brain while you're in this uh, in this kind of world right now because uh, I don't have the answers. I'm watching it like everybody else. I'm just thinking, oh, you know, it kind of lightens the load. Uh, in your mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. that you're doing the, like VR and playing games because you're not, you're not looking at Twitter, you're not looking at the news, and then you so your mind's a little bit more at ease. And I feel like that is a uh, big psychological help 
um, especially to me, because otherwise, you know, me, I'm looking at my phone, it's beeping, somebody sending me a message about something, someone's sharing a link, got the news going on, I got the stocks going on, it's like, oh, it's like apocalypse time, right? So I feel yeah. like some of these escapism uh, products out there uh, might be good if some people are like sitting on the fence going, well, I wonder if I should get this, um, you know, will it help? Um, I think definitely these kind of things are going to help um, get you out of that uh, rut, because I don't know how many how much TV shows you can you can watch, because I don't feel like you accomplish much when you finish watching one or two series, at least a game, like, you know, you're kind of going through it. It's like a book that's unfolding mm -hmm. and there's a story happening. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I mean, I think I, there's a couple series that I've caught up on. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, you, you mentioned you're watching, like, Westworld. I was starting back on that because I didn't, I saw season one and then I didn't see season two. Um, especially since I don't have HBO in, in Hong Kong. But, uh the, those are big time investments. I'm still not even. I'm like one third through Westworld, but the the video gaming at least or the VR stuff is sort of like this kind of quick thing that you can kind of turn to. Yeah. But so, um, well, tell me uh, to kind of like wrap things up too. Tell me about because um, we're so we're if people are still listening to us here. Yeah. Um, you know, we're doing this test of video. So you're shooting video on your side, and I'm shooting video on my side, but also using Zoom. Um, but uh, I know you're 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 prepping for what's to come. Like um, Collision is doing its first like in-home kind of uh, Collision at home, right? right? Um, and there's going to be a lot of interviews and a lot of uh, interaction. So we're 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 doing a test too to see what it's like to kind of like see if we can up the production value slightly and uh, see if it's still efficient. But um, tell me a little bit about what's going on there. Well, yeah, we're still planning it. That's what's a great thing is uh, Collision From Home will still be in June. It will be uh, on uh, Toronto time. It'll, there'll be some parts that are free and some parts that'll be paid. Um, we have 250 speakers already committed to this format, which is incredible. So a lot of the uh, high level um, Speakers are coming back to do it like this, like Brad Smith, the president of Microsoft, um, the uh, Game of Thrones actor um, who played, uh, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name, but you know, the guy, uh, the guy who, who Cersei's a brother and lover, that guy, he's going to be there. Oh man, you got to edit that part out. I don't want I this it. part in there. I can't believe I can't remember the guy's name. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I'm terrible. I'm not I I'm love that show name, so much. So. And I, I just can't, I just... I just saw his face on the site today and I was like, oh my God, that guy's going to be there. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's some great, great speakers uh, committed to speaking at the conference still. And uh, basically everybody will be at home just doing it just like we're doing it right now. Um, and then we're mm -hmm. just going to use some new technologies to make sure everything syncs up properly and that there's uh, a lot of networking and things like that going on at the same time. So um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be, it's exciting. I think the whole team is very excited about doing it this way and the speakers are all on board. So, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. What are the main, what are the main challenges that you see? Um, well, I mean, you've been to the conference before, so yeah, I feel which like is great. I mean, a lot of interaction, a lot of great stages and production and a lot of, and a lot of, uh, engagement and the app is great too. Yeah. So yeah, that's the main thing. How do we keep the engagement level high? How do we keep the networking high? How do we keep those spontaneous meetings high? That is the biggest thing, right? Because people just randomly walk into each other at the conference show floor and uh, that's when a friendship is made or that's when an investment is made, things like that. So we're working on how to replicate that online. Obviously, it's not going to be the same, but it might work in a different way. Um, I just feel like it's about... Uh, just making sure the platform is there to do to make it a possibility rather than just say, oh, forget it, we're not going to do it, um, just wait till next year. At least we're going to try and do it and we got these mm -hmm. great speakers to get people in and then from there we, we can push you together and plus we'll know who's who more easily, more easily than spontaneous so we can push like people like maybe say like yourself with other entertainment people that are there so that they can meet each other. So maybe it's even mm -hmm. better this way, we don't know. So we'll see. Yeah, I think there are some advantages that you can quickly connect with somebody, you know, on, on a platform like this and you're not limited to like a physical place like because you could easily get stuck and then like let's say you're at a bar and you're like, oh, I don't know who to talk to or, yeah. you know, or making those, uh, digitally making an introduction is a lot of times easier. Like you could connect. But that's, and then so that's the next challenge. What happens if this works so well that nobody wants to go to the real one anymore? 
right? Yeah, that is a good question. I don't think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, raise my hand and say I don't. I, I don't. I don't think so either. But think about important. it. Like you just said, it's that's a good point. It's a good uh, scenario. You go to a bar, you walk in, and you're shy, and you don't know who to talk to, and it sucks, right? Then you leave. But on an in online platform, you walk into a virtual chat room. You know who the people are, what they look like, where they're from, what they do. And so you can actually go and meet the people that you really want to meet and start talking to them. Mm -hmm. Like, so if they're both in like, they're both YouTube creators, you don't know them by looking at them, but you know them by, you know, rolling over their profile on the, on the screen. And you're like, oh, this guy seems interesting. And you can actually even watch a YouTube clip before you even talk to the guy or the girl, whatever. Right. Wow. That's mm -hmm. what that's what the mm -hmm. promise of AR and all this stuff is like, right? So you can do all this stuff easily. So, so I don't know. I think maybe for uh, introverts, it's uh, might might be more exciting. I don't know. We'll see. I think so. I think yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot of new, um, a lot of uh, new things that we didn't imagine happen, and a lot of good stuff. So, um, that's that's all you can do and then uh, go from there and see what happens. But I think it's going to be, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. And it's definitely, I definitely give you guys a lot of uh, kudos for like pushing the edge and, and making it happen. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Let's see. Let's hope it all comes together though. <laughs> That's the main, the main thing. It will. It will. You know, I just want to thank everyone for joining us on the chat. Casey, we're going to try to do this more often, right? That's right. Let's do it. Yeah, I wore my camo gear just for you to do this, too. Um, Look at that shot. It looks so cool. Yeah, here, let's do a pound, too. And then we're out. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>